I've got to say, on the whole, not a shitty performance. Like, really, not that bad for a $400 AR-15. Daniel Defense is a high-end and popular turnkey AR-15 manufacturer, and I would say probably the most expensive big box commercial AR maker. You all say I'm a gun snob, and I am a huge Daniel Defense fan, so I guess it tracks. However, I do recognize value when it's there. For example, I recently reviewed the under $500 Ruger American Bolt Action, and I was extremely impressed. Additionally, I performed an accuracy comparison, you guys may remember, with my 400 ish dollar DPMS AR-15 I bought on clearance whenever they went out of business, I pitted it against my Bravo Company rifle, maybe one of my favorite ARs, my shit hit the fan go-to gun. You guys really enjoyed that video, and some of you assholes even had a little chuckle about it because the DPMS, with its heavy barrel, outshot my light profile BCM that cost four times as much. You like that video, so let's run it back. This time we're gonna go even cheaper versus even more expensive. In today's vid, I've got my brand new Daniel Defense Riz 3 M4. Just kidding, it's not mine, but I'm borrowing it. And I've got a gun that I assembled myself and I did pay for using parts from the cheapest AR brands out there, Palmetto State Armory and Anderson Manufacturing. So today, we're taking the cheapest of the cheap AR-15s and pitting it against the most expensive. To be fair, I did give this budget build behind me a little bit of a handicap to make things more interesting, but I'll tell you about that in just a second. Before we get there, like I mentioned, this is a TNE Daniel Defense rifle I've got to send back. I bought that PSA with my own money. We have sponsors, but we're mostly viewer supported, meaning that we rely on you guys to make content instead of agreeing to give positive reviews in exchange for a check. So if you like our unbiased content, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Or better, if you support us and subscribe to our Utreon, there's a good chance that you could win one of four guns from our sponsor, Top Gun Supply, your online shooting sport superstore. We give away four guns every single month from them. Check the description for links. Now, let's talk about the Riz 3. Some of you are familiar with Daniel Defense, the Riz handguard or the rail interface system because Daniel Defense was famously awarded a large contract from US SOCOM, Special Operations Command, to supply the RIS-2 to the special operations community. The RIS-2 earned its reputation as being one of the toughest handguards available, period. However, the RIS-2 is a quad Picatinny rail design. M-Locks become more popular these days because it allows your handguard to be smooth, it gives a bit more mounting flexibility while using a narrower diameter, and it'll tend to be lighter weight as well. So everyone kind of saw this coming. At SHOT Show 2022, Daniel Defense launches the Riz 3, which uses M-Lock instead of Picatinny. You all also saw my Daniel Defense DDM4 V7 review where I unreasonably abused that gun using the standard lightweight handguard, the MFR handguard. I took the V7 to the plains of South Texas about a year ago and I beat it like Antonio Brown in a Dubai infinity pool and it still functioned perfectly. So I bought one in Deep Woods Green for myself a short time later. To be fair, the MFR light handguard, one of my favorites on that V7, actually worked itself a little bit loose during that test. It uses a four screw design. The Riz 3, on the other hand, uses a six screw design with a very robust mounting plate. It's made to be free floating and to absorb the impact of the M203 grenade launcher, which this handguard actually will mount up with if you replace this bottom portion here, really cool. Essentially, what you're getting with the DDM4 Riz 3 rifle is a DDM4 with top of the line Special Forces tested and adopted handguard already installed, full ambi controls. Is this a good deal at 2300 bucks plus? Guess we'll talk about it in this video. So in this corner, we have the DDM4 Riz 3, and in that corner, we have the JJM4 Shiz 3 aka the James J. Reeves M4 Shitstick 3. As mentioned, Anderson Arms and PSA are the least expensive guns out there. You can get a complete PSA M4 for $450 bucks straight from PSA. 
Not even mad about it, I'm impressed. Anderson is even cheaper at under $400 for a complete AR-15, possibly even functional. And if you're willing to build it yourself, you can buy an Anderson lower for 35 bucks like I did, spend probably the same on a lower parts kit, buy a complete PSA upper, all said and done. I probably could have finished that rifle for about 350 bucks or less. But here's that handicap I was talking about. I actually gave that PSA build behind me a little bit of an edge and I spent around an extra 100 bucks or so and I got an upper with a 416 stainless steel medium contour barrel and a fake dissipator setup. Stainless steel barrels are renowned for delivering great accuracy in AR-15s. In the last video, I gave the DPMS a little bit of an edge with a heavy barrel. So let's see if stainless will give the budget build a leg up on the DDM4 here on the range. I used the same optic on both guns. That's the Japanese made Maven RS4. It's a five to 30 X scope, way too much scope for hundred yards, but I've used it in the past. I'm pretty fond of it. Dollar for dollar, it's great glass, but something feels a little fricked up about putting a $1,800 optic on a $400 rifle. So I set up at the hundred yard marker on a Caldwell bag. I let her rip. I used three different types of ammo in three different grain weights. I started with regular ass 55 grain M193 brass case wolf gold, which seems to be about an above average performer for me on these tests. After that, 77 grain OTM federal ammo to use something heavier. And then I used a perennial favorite of mine for these tests, 50 grain federal varmint and predator which performs shockingly well for a non-match round. Here's how it went. So I started with Wolf Gold. The PSA turned out a surprisingly good group of 1.8 inches. With Wolf 55 grain, that's Wolf Gold, like the good stuff, not the really, really awful Wolf steel stuff. We're looking at a group of 1.8 inches. The Daniel Defense, on the other hand. I got a little concerned because first group I shot out of the Daniel Defense, the very first group after zeroing was a five round group of Wolf 55 grain. That's the Wolf Gold. 2.1 inches. Didn't seem to like the Wolf, but I mean, come on guys, cheap ammo, expensive gun. You know that wasn't going to work. Next, I tried some higher quality ammo using 77 grain OTM from Federal. The PSA hammered out a two and a half inch group, which is okay. We brought Escargo back to the trailer, meaning I got really expensive 77 grain Federal match ammo OTM. And the best group that we got was 2.5 inches at 100 yards. Not bad, not good. The DD on the other hand punched an impressive one and a half inch group. Here's the 77 grain Federal OTM, the good shit. Measuring it from outer edge to outer edge of the outer rounds, you get 1.7 inches exactly. You subtract 0.224, the diameter of the round, and that puts you at under 1.5 inches, really strong. To bring a third round into the fold as the tiebreaker, I used the Varmint and Predator 50 grain. The PSA didn't really seem to like this as much either with a 2.2 inch group as its best group of five at 100 yards. 2.2 inches with 50 grain Federal Varmint and Predator, actually one of my favorites. Normally it performs really, really well. I gotta say out of like a $400 AR, 2.2 inches with this stuff, also not bad. Bear in mind that both of these rifles use a one and seven inch twist barrel, so a lot of people might think that they wouldn't like 50 grain light ammo. The Daniel Defense, however, this is again the Federal Varmint and Predator. This stuff is just so good for some reason. Less than one and a half inches, outer edge to outer edge, that means you subtract 0.224 and that gets you at about 1.25 inches, five shot group, really strong. Dropped the best group of the day at right about one and a quarter inches. Finally, just for fun, I ran cheap Turkish ZQI ammo through the DD 
with the Huxworks Flow 556K suppressor, and I casually strung a 1.4 inch group together. So even with a 416 stainless steel barrel, the JJM4 Shiz 3 couldn't keep up. I wasn't surprised because Daniel Defense Cold Hammer forges their own barrels at their own factory. Cold Hammer forging is a more expensive barrel making process where a barrel is literally hammered out of a metal rod instead of just drilled out like most barrels. This is the gold standard for barrel manufacturing and it leads to longer lasting barrels that tend to be more accurate as well. Daniel Defense also high pressure tests the barrels with a proof load and then it uses magnetic particle inspection to make sure that the barrels hold up to proof testing at a magnetic level. It's no wonder that Daniel Defense also landed a $9 million contract with SOCOM for their barrels too. But accuracy isn't the end all be all of the AR-15. I mean, who cares how accurate a gun is if it's unreliable or if it breaks apart after shooting a case of ammo. Durability and reliability are just as, if not more important. That's why I've got my BCM under the bed and not my more accurate DPMS. I know that it's gonna run accurately enough when I need it to. Even so, the price difference between the $2,300 MSRP RIS-3 and the PSA is nearly sixfold. So what do you get for that? As I mentioned, you get a SOCOM selected and proven rail and barrel combo, which is a huge plus. Cold hammer forging can't oversell it. The RIS-3 comes with a completely ambi lower. Another possible failure points the charging handle. And if you compare the USGI standard charging handle to the beefed up Daniel Defense grip and rip charging handle, there's a visible difference. The bolt carrier group is the heart of your AR-15. If a component in your bolt carrier group gets busted, you're up shit creek. Daniel Defense uses mil-spec Carpenter 158 steel bolts that are shot peened for durability. They're also high pressure tested and they're also magnetic particle inspected just like the barrels. The carriers are properly staked gas key mil-spec 8620 steel that are chrome lined and phosphated. Now to be fair to PSA, unbelievably, PSA claims that they use mil-spec bolt and bolt carriers too, allegedly. Not all bolt carrier groups are created equally even if they have the same specs on paper, but on paper, the PSA seems to be evenly matched. With the Daniel Defense, you're getting a mil-spec receiver extension, including a heavy buffer for reduced recoil and excellent furniture with QD sling points everywhere. But as much as I shill for DD, it's also true that even with a $2,300 MSRP rifle, you're still missing sights out of the box, meaning that you either have to buy an optic or iron sights, or I guess you could just point and guess. You also get a plain ass GI trigger with your $2,000 plus rifle. But on the other hand, it is hard to get what you get from Daniel Defense for the same price anywhere else. As I mentioned, Cold Hammer Forge Barrel, which is a huge selling point, as is the RIS-3 handguard, which may be the best handguard in its class. You're also getting fully ambi controls, mil-spec everything, beefy charging handle, great furniture, great customer support from a huge manufacturer. I guess the bottom line is that if you're like me and you're not going to want to build your own gun, but you do want top tier components and a gun that can do everything you need it to do and squeeze out MOA accuracy with budget ammo, I truly believe that Daniel Defense is probably one of your best options out there. I'm not trying to say that you can't build something comparable or more economically efficient for less money or that there aren't more efficient dollar to performance rifle manufacturers out there like Bravo Company and Aero both come to mind as really strong performers dollar for dollar. By the way guys, I'm not beating up on PSA and Anderson buyers out there. I'm really proud of the fact that your average guy can go pick up an AR-15 that'll punch out better than two inch groups at 100 yards with off the shelf ammo. Sure, it might not be as durable or reliable or as accurate or as cool as good looking or as well featured or hold its resale value or have lots of sling points or have lots of M-lock mounting options or you get it. The DD has a ton of features and performance characteristics that the Poverty Pony and other mid-tier builders lack. But if that's all you can afford, there's no shame there. And for that matter, maybe you don't want a spec ops capable, specced out gun. There's a strong argument to be made that if you have two grand, whether you should spend it on a PSA or Anderson in four cases of ammo, 
versus buying a top of the line fighting rifle and then picking up training and accessories as you can afford them. When I was younger, I took the latter route. I saved up, bought the best AR that I could buy. I've got no regrets, but as much fun as I like to have at your expense, for buying PSA or whatever. I'm not gonna beat up on you guys that see more value in getting a budget gun, learning how to use it before dropping a couple grand on a top shelf spec ops tier rifle. At the end of the day, just remember, we're all on the same team. Guys, tell me what you think in the comments. For 2,500 bucks, would you rather go top tier, get just your rifle, or would you rather buy something a little bit less expensive and spring for ammo? Now, if you wanna buy an AR, and if you want to buy ammo, I highly recommend Top Gun Supply, your online shooting sports superstore. One of our sponsors, Tom and Michelle, great people, love them. If you need ammo to feed it, which you do, Ventura Munitions has some of the best pricing and availability out there, even though they're out of that damned varmint and predator, and I love that stuff. Speaking of love, you guys know it. I love you just for watching. Thank you guys so much. Take care of yourselves. Goodbye.